groups stands for object oriented uh, programming system object programming system oops are building blocks or any programming that may be dotnet or java php so without whoops uh, there is no language so whoops plays a vital role so here basically whoops works based on one principle that is called dry principle what is the principle name dry principle so dry nothing but don't repeat yourself don't repeat yourself means don't achieve code reuse sorry don't use duplicate code as much as possible you will remove the duplicate code that is the meaning so here what are the advantages by using oops first one is achieve security how to achieve the security we'll discuss so achieve code reusability avoid redundancy as much as possible redundancy nothing but duplicate code suppose your your project duplicate code getting Increases your application performance get degraded. So, so to improve your application performance as much as possible, we will avoid redundancy. These are the advantages by using OOPS. So, what are the OOPS principles? OOPS principles are encapsulation. abstraction inside the abstraction we can achieve general abstraction by using abstract class as well as interface and then inheritance and then polymorphism so here we can achieve the polymorphism in two ways compile time polymorphism so best example for compile time polymorphism is method overloading we'll discuss one by one and runtime polymorphism runtime polymorphism best example overriding so this is what oops over you so oops stands for object oriented programming language so oops are building blocks for any programming so basically oops works based on the dry principle so dry stands for don't repeat yourself don't repeat nothing but suppose your project contain common logic you will move all the common logic into an utility class wherever you require use that class by using inheritance relationship that's it that is so that's why in that way we can avoid the duplicate code so what are the primary advantages by using oops is we can achieve the security how to achieve the security we'll discuss and achieve the code reusability code reusability nothing but suppose you design the piece of code that will be visible that will be used from anywhere wherever you want so in order to achieve reusability that piece of code you can design in separate method wherever you want you can call that method that's in that way you can achieve the code reusability second third one is avoid redundancy avoid redundancy nothing but suppose uh, your project or your class contain 10 lines you can write multiple times 10 lines of copies of same logic you can repeat multiple times in the same class then that is called duplicate code suppose duplicate code get increases duplicate code get increases then your application performance degraded so here in order to improve your application performance as much as possible you will avoid avoid the duplicate code that is your agenda that's it now here we have four oops principles are there encapsulation abstraction inheritance polymorphism 
first we'll discuss before discuss about this post principles and class and objects are so what is the dry principle based on dry principle try nothing but don't repeat yourself means don't allow duplicate code that's it so don't repeat suppose you have a piece of code so if you want to use that piece of code in another 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 class then that piece of code will be separate out in a utility class as a method in wherever you require use that method that's it okay so clear to utilize to utilize oops principles class and object are the hot cake for for oops now we'll discuss class and object class and object so before discuss class and object i have one example suppose i want to construct the house assume i want to construct house so basically how to construct the house we will construct the house based on plan yes or no so without plan we can't construct we can't construct house without plan so here plan plays a vital role first plan is important based on the plan you can construct the house so here plan occupy any space so here plan exist logically exist logically plan does not occupy any space on the earth that's it so here so plan exist logically it does not exist physically so it does not occupy any space and house next house so house exists physically house exists physically or logically house okay. exists physically now house occupy any space yes space on the earth so here what the motto here without plan can we construct the house huh? we can't no. construct the house without without plan that's it this is generic example now assume class is treated as plan and object treated as object is treated as house link your class with plan your object with house now class so here class exist physically or logically logically hmm. so, so just assume plan so here class exist logically so class occupy any space house so here plan occupy any space uh, class no. doesn't occupy any space any space in memory that's it so so just link your class with your plan that's it how to create the class now we will create class definition definition with one keyword what is the keyword name what is the keyword name class class keyword what is the syntax class 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 name and inside the class you can write method or constructor variables variables methods and constructor and blocks what are blocks are there so here basically class contains variables methods constructor and blocks now next one object so here Assume object is treated as house. Sir, what is constructor? Wait, wait. Already, already constructor is completed. Whoever joined new, I will explain again. Don't worry. Okay. So here, object exists 
physically and object occupy space in the memory memory so here we will cre create object to the class by using a new operator okay. operator along with along with constructor that may be default constructor or parameterized constructor so here and create an object without without class. without class so here creating an object is nothing but allocating some space to variables your class variables methods like that okay now can you design one sample class 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 name class class name that's it so this is template for class then how to create the object now object creation so here class name uh, reference variable equal to new class class name end with parenthesis end with parenthesis so this is constructor so generally we will create an object to the class by using new operator along with constructor so here emp is equal to new emp this is called right side is called object so left side is called reference variable uh, object is stored in the heap area reference variable is stored in reference variable stored in stack area now i am going to discuss observe here class emp so i am not at all interested to write anything just this is called class definition ha huh. class definition now i am going to create an object how to create an object class name reference equal to new class name so this is called object creation so whenever we will write like this we will write like this what will happen so the right side is called object so generally we are creating an object by using new operator whenever we will create an object by using new operator then that object is stored as part of the heap area so memory is divided into several parts in that one of the part is heap area so object is stored where object is stored where heap area stack yeah not stack here object heap area, heap area right okay object assume. emp obj assume this is object now left side is called ref left side is called reference variable all the reference variables are stored in stack area reference variables are stored where stack area is one 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 part of the memory now this is reference variable now reference variable is pointing to the reference variable is pointing to your heap object the reference variable is pointing to your heap object that's it so how internally object stored and how uh, your reference variable stored internally this is internal logic how data gets stored in the memory any questions up to this any questions 
No. Hello. Can you try sir. one sample Reference. example? Sorry. Reference variables means what, sir? Reference variable nothing but this is what reference variable. So variable is renamed as reference variable in case of object creation. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Now I will show you one sample example how to create the class and how to create the object and how to call the method. Now please observe. Sir, the object nothing but the construct, right? No, 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 no. Hello, sir. Here we will create an object by using new operator along with the constructor. Okay. So now observe here. Sir, address of the object will be stored in this stack area. Yes, yes. Reference variables. All the reference variables are stored in the stack area. Means internally ref addresses are stored in the stack area. Okay, okay. Thank you. One minute. I will show you one sample example. Then you can understand. Now, one minute. I want to switch the workspace. other so here screenu tech so just i create one folder with the name screenu tech launch it One minute. So restore the workspace. We'll wait one or two minutes. Yeah, meanwhile, you have any questions, please go ahead. I will answer your questions. We can not uh, use in Eclipse. You can use. You can use either Eclipse or STS or IntelliJ or anything, whatever you want, you can use it. So just it is the IDE integrated development tool, right? You can use any tool to develop the Java programs. Same tool again. Sorry. The STS is all the program. Yeah, is STS is Spring tool should generally STS we will use to design the Spring Boot microservices. So you can use STS as well to design these programming. Any program that may be code Java or advanced Java, anything you can design. By using STS. Company is company use. So most of the companies will use either STS or IntelliJ only. So no one will use Eclipse oh. nowadays. Yeah. Now observe. Okay, okay. First, I will create the project. File new Java project. So my project name is. ST stands for Srinu Tech. Techno you can give any name. And in my system, as of now, 1.8 is there. Select 1.8 and click on finish. So this is project creation. Once project is created, step two, step two, create packages. One minute. Uh -huh. So here, once project is created. We got two folders. One is JRE Java runtime. So Java related files will get stored as part of JRE and Java programs will be stored as part of SRC. SRC nothing but source. Inside the SRC, you can write the Java programs. Now inside the SRC, first create the package. Com dot st st Srinutek. I click on finish. This is project creation package creation. Once package get created inside the package, you can create the classes. Now I am going to create the class. So my class name is customer. So here this is the package. You are, so you are created your class name under S. This package is called com.st. This package is available inside the SRC folder. That's it. Now click on finish. So here assume class class name 
class class name this is the structure to create the class template inside the class just you will define some variables so this is called instance variables the variables which are defined inside the class and outside the method or constructor just blindly write one method this method is responsible to display some output cnvo c name so this is your class definition now your class did not contain any main method so always whenever you will execute the any java program always jvm check for main method so here observe here whenever click on here click on this program one minute uh. click on this one one minute oh, what happened here click on this one run as so please observe how many options are there run as server and run configuration run as java application option is not there so id also has intelligence whenever main method is available then only one more option is visible automatically here now create one more class which contains the main method so class so here you can use client always main method execution start from main method select this main method click on finish from here you will create an object to your class and call the method so now observe here just right click observe here one more option came into picture what is the java application once main method is visible or available then jvm or ide got the intelligence to make visible one more option called java application now from main method generally we will create an object to the class so your class name is customer c is equal to new customer new customer so right side is called object so here we will create an object by using new operator along with along with default constructor along with default constructor so right side is called object object stored in the heap area so left side is called reference variable all the reference variables stored in the stack area reference variables will pointing to heap object once object is created creating an object is nothing but allocating some space to your class variables and methods and then on the reference variable you can call your methods that's it so these instance variables are initialized with any values any values developer forget to initialize then default get values are initialized to that instance variables via default constructor observe yes now your doubt Hey Suman, can you can you initialize the values to your class uh, instance variables by using uh, reference variable? Yes. C dot observe here C dot C N Y equal to hundred. C dot C name equal to Sino. Now observe through reference through object reference, I am going to initialize the values to your class instance variables. that's it any questions up to this sir any questions sir, without object creation how to call the method sir not possible not possible so static method if that is that is the static method in that case we can call that static method by using class name okay. without ref object impossible to create class method any questions all right now next one i am going to discuss pozo pozo stands for plain old java object java object so generally this name is changed from different different environments in core java you can call it as pozo 
in core java it is called as bozo suppose you will go for groovy you will go for groovy it will called as pojo plain old groovy object pojo okay suppose you will go for hibernate you will call it as entity but some similar changes are there in that one entity suppose you will go for spring or spring boot either you will go for spring model spring boot spring boot huh spring bean that name is called spring bean suppose lo long back ago we have called struts framework in that one same pozo call it as form bean like this from environment to environment name get changed that's it same thing only little bit difference are there that's it now pozo contains pozo contains variables variables but that variables we will write setters and get getters getters for variables so what the purpose of setter setters are used to set the, set value the values to class variable through object reference reference one minute guys people are still joining here this is too much getters are used to get class variable value through reference that's it. just i will show you one how to write setter and getter observe class customer sir what is bozo plain old java object so it will contain some properties for that properties you can write setters and getters encapsulation sorry setters and getters is uh, encapsulation repeat your question setter and getters means uh, encapsulation wait wait i will discuss i will discuss one minute so here okay. observe why i will go for uh, pozo class now you will get idea so this is customer is the different class and client is the different class right are same classes same class are different classes different classes different suppose different. i want to i want to withdraw some amount can i enter into cashier room directly no can i no right that so here also no. we can't give access to another class for direct variable modification what you are doing here you are assigning the values or you you will perform some updation on customer instance variables right Yes or no? No, yes. don't allow. Yes. Don't yes. allow one. Don't allow direct modification of another class variables. To do that, to do that, we will we will go for. So generally, we will access these variables through methods, but we can't access directly one class variables. How to do it? Now observe here. One by one, I will go. Step one. Your variable defined as private. Whenever we will define variable as private. that scope is within the class only outside the class we can't access please observe private whenever we will define your variable as private scope is within the class only outside the class we can't access now observe error put the cursor visible c and y is not visible so clear up to this now so here any error here so here cashier so here directly customer class variables are accessing and performing modification generally this is not at all allowable in java to restrict that one define class variables as private whenever class whenever will define class variables as private then the this variable scope is within the class only within the class only can access outside the class we can't access that's why here error gone so now okay we avoid to access customer class variables from client class then how to access that variables here 
through method only we can access through method only we can access run it yep still that are the instance variables you are you forget to initialize the values then default values get initialized through default constructor now i want to set the values to that poso class properties to set the values to that poso class properties we will go for setters now i am going to design setter now always method should be public public nothing but from anywhere you can access public ah huh. so there is no return type for setter keep white for any setter there is no return type white and set what the what the variable name convert first letter as upper case like this and then again i will explain method should be public and setter there is no return type keep white and set you are variable first letter converted as upper case now here you are setting the value that's why whatever variable is there define as it is now observe here your local what the instance variable name what the instance variable name eno local variable name eno only but both are same how to differentiate which is instance variable and which is local variable this dot cno equal to cno so this dot cno represents instance variable this is this is setter to set the value to your class variable similarly i am going to design getter so here getter getter is also method method should be public so public method can be accessible from anywhere and here what is your variable type variable type int so it returns int only and getter get first letter should be your variable first letter should be converted into upper case parenthesis here there is no setting just returning so here just return cn what that's it return nothing but it return the value to the caller that's it this is setter and getter any questions so for your understanding like this this is setter and getter so here no need to write manually so observe here go to customer class right click here right click source generate setters and getter just select this option select all for all the properties you want to generate setters and getter click on generate now observe here this is what right just now we designed yes or no method should be public and there is no return type keep white and set first letter is converted as upper case and local variable instance variable keep as it is for maintainability and separate out local variable and instance variable by using this keyword and observe the getter method should be public and return type is there and get first letter is converted into upper uh, capital and return that variable that's it now go here observe here now i am going to set the value yes dot through setter only previously will directly setting the value to that variable now through method through method i am going to set the value so that is our final agenda c dot set c name c no that's it through method through methods you can interact with your variables Do, but don't direct allow on direct variables modification that is our agenda that's it any questions i think everyone understand this pozo generally objects are divided into two types object re reference based object reference based object and anonymous object so reference based nothing but the object which contains the reference the object 
which contains reference is called as reference object assume class emp now here emp e is equal to new emp here object is right side right this object contain reference this is called reference based object now next one anonymous anonymous object huh. object without reference is called as anonymous object anonymous object so here class class name so here observe here how to re, object based reference equal to emp is equal to new emp but here anonymous left side is not required this is anonymous object without reference without reference that object is called anonymous object now i will give example observe here So here in this case how many times you are using reference how many times single time or multiple times multiple Three times, times right? so in this case you will go for anonymous object or reference based object we are going for the reference based reference, reference, reference based is better right suppose you will go for anonymous every time you will get new operator like this yes sir no suppose you will create three times three up three times object get created so create, creating the object nothing but allocating some space unnecessarily we waste our memory so so the method observe here welcome to methods now observe here same thing we will do c dot m this is a reference based object this is what a reference based object now same thing observe here i want to remove reference then how to call it observe here it remove this one dot this is called please observe like this this is anonymous object the object without reference variable is called anonymous object that's it any questions uh, i have a small question if we having the multiple methods in a class then uh, then we will go for anonymous... uh, reference based then you can go for uh, reference based but if we want to use the anonymous then uh, that will be creating a lot of uh, yes uh, yes 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 